Hola, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. For those of you guys that are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Pinky. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies, to Tarot 101. We are finally here, continuing on our fool's journey, coming face to face with Major Arcana number 15, the Lord of the Gates of Matter, the child of the forces of time, Zodiac Trump of Capricorn. Saturn rules Mars exalted tree of life path 26 with the right eye create all for thyself and with the left accept all that be created otherwise the devil may not exist but there is most definitely a devil card in the tarot and in my opinion he is the most universally misunderstood character in the entire deck but then you'd probably guess I would say that this is a trump of Capricorn, the sign of the goat. Indeed, for the purpose of divination, the devil has truly been the scapegoat for all the perceived evils that could befall us and the sinful temptations that are constantly luring us towards self-destruction. How convenient. Ah, yes. But if the devil is supposed to be the cart that represents evil... Which card should we pick to represent good? All the other trumps, as we have learned, have the potential of representing the qualities of both good and evil. Why do we need one card just for evil? Food for thought, right? Can the fool be thoughtless enough, the magician larcenous enough, the high priestess seductive enough, the empress wicked enough, the emperor tyrannical enough, the Hierophant bigoted enough, the lovers unfaithful enough, the chariot pretentious enough, the strength card lascivious enough, and the list goes on. Abusive enough, it should be obvious when we speak about the devil in something other than the ultimate evil that something other is just what his full title proclaims. He is the Lord of the gates of matter. That in itself can be pretty scary, especially if you've been convinced that earthly life is somehow an estrangement from God and that all things on the material plane, including you and me, are inherently evil. Well, let's grow up, you guys. <laughs> Whatever the supreme being is, it would not be the supreme being if it weren't everything, including you and I, and that including the devil. It seems pretty obvious that the devil is just God as misunderstood by the ignorant and wicked. This card represents creative energy and its most material form in the Zodiac. Capricorn constellation occupies the Zenith, right? The 10th in the Zodiac. It is the most exalted of the signs. It is the goat leaping with lust upon the summit of earth. In this sign, Mars is exalted, showing it its best from the fiery material energy of creation. The card represents Pan in the major arcana, as well as the hermit and the devil offer a threefold explanation of the male creative energy. But this card in itself, the devil, especially represents the masculine energy and its most masculine energy indeed. Look at the card. I don't have to draw you a picture. It is very explicit. The whole card is the devil. A magnificent three-eyed Himalayan goat stands before a tree. A three-eyed Himalayan goat stands before a tree and it's two great transparent depictions. The most interesting are the figures in the picture. In traditional tarot decks, the devil Trump shows a woman and a man standing beneath the devil and curious attitudes of worship and bondage. This is the devil. The world has been talking to create fear. He is life itself unrestrained in mad love and seeking to grow and unite with absolutely everything. The formula in this card is then the complete appreciation of all existing things. He rejoices 
in the barren no less than in the smooth and the fertile. All things equally exalt him. He represents the finding of ecstasy in every phenomenon. However, naturally repugnant, he transcends all limitations. He is Pan. The devil major arcana is the I am. Choosing there are a few terror cards that will freak people out, right? As we have seen. The tarot, for example, the death card, the three of swords, the ten of swords, and the devil card. Freaks everyone out. I've been doing this for over 20 years and I always hear it when clients see this card. It's unnerving. Too many things as the tarot card is about the Christian construct of the devil, at least not in the traditional sense. The devil was based on Pan, who was quite the licinious god, booze, freedom, and lots and lots of sex. Pagans love this stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> but no exception, Christians, not so much. So our fun-loving pagan got a new name and a new role. However, there is a reason and purpose for everything you see. The people are chained to his throne. Those are pretty thick chains and look fairly sturdy. Look at their necks. They could slip those off at any time, but they're choosing not to. That's what this card is about. Who could create a better hell for us than ourselves? Who knows our weakness better than ourselves? Who knows how to make us feel low and dirty and worthless? Who is ready to exploit these vulnerabilities and hurt at a moment's notice? Yep, ourselves. We don't always chain ourselves up without help of peer pressure or guidance from parents. Whatever your path is at some point, you have a choice that we need to make. Do I wear this chain or not? Do I drink in excess or do I not? Do I treat this person like crap? Do I hurt someone just because I can do it? Do I steal? Do I judge? Should I take this action or make this choice just because I can? And then run over whomever might get in the way. These choices are ours to make. And I have a feeling the older we get, the heavier the chain, scared and grows harder to take them off as time progresses. So while the picture freaks you out, the card in its meaning just makes me sad. This is not scary, boogeyman type of thing. It's almost scarier than this card it is about training yourself to those things that pull you down. We turn ourselves inside out and pick and pack and pack until our insides are bloody mess. I wonder why we all allow that. What does it become when does it become okay to verbally and emotionally abuse ourselves? And what context, in what fashion does saying horrible things to ourselves become permissible and even expected? I think it comes down to two things: fear and doubt. Fear that we're not good or as good as everyone else, and the doubt that allows the fear to trickle. If we were confident and strong, what someone else is about to say bounces right off of us, right? When they judge or critique us. This card is all about addictions, unhealthy habits, feeling oppressed or stuck in patterns giving you or giving your power away. It's about being tempted, tricked or manipulated into giving your power away without truly realizing it. Think of it as the opposite of enlightenment. Now look at the torch that the devil is carrying pointed downwards, which is the opposite of what you see with the hermit card in the tarot and the major arcana. When he's holding the lantern upright instead of awareness, we have unawareness. If you look at this picture, it's all black in the background, darkness, not being able to see, not being able to realize the unconscious, the unseen. With this card, the devil wants us, wants to keep us in the dark really keep us from opening our eyes, like I mentioned. Major Arcana 15. If we add those numbers together, we get six, which is car which is the card number six in the Major Arcana. The lovers, right? Do you see a connection between these two figures, the woman and the man in the lovers? We have the same couple that is the devil. But the lovers, of course, they are being preceded over by angel, by an angel. 
versus in the devil card, they are being preceded by the devil. Something for you guys to see and analyze and study. Angels are always a representation of spirituality, of higher consciousness, of awareness. As we can see here, the lovers, the figures of the male and female are in the devil card as well. So we go from the lovers, right? Passion, excitement, desire to the lovers being chained, being in bondage. What has created or transpired that lustrous excitement and passion and desire to become something of a toxic environment? Something for you guys to think about. One way of looking at the devil card, as well as understanding that the devil card wants you to focus and pay attention solely to the material world, not the spiritual. So what you're picking up with your five senses is all that there is and nothing to it, which is why we often get wrapped up in the material, this earthly plane. By distractions or worries, escapism from the heavy burdens, if your spiritual is not fed, it is not nurtured, now pay attention to the horns of the devil. They are extremely large. Again, it is in the physical, a cardinal, the animalistic nature. It is a very horny card, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> but as well as the two figures having tiny horns representing the animalistic desires, lust that we all carry within ourselves because it is part of our nature. Now look at the hand position of the devil. Does it remind you of another major arcana? Think about it. Perhaps the magician? The devil focuses primarily on this earthly plane and everything that is earthly bound. Magician is the active thought of creation, becoming a manifestation, entering the earthly bound. Something to ponder over for those of you guys that are truly genuinely trying to learn the cards and its deeper meanings. But also when this card shows up in your reading, it usually indicates your readiness for freedom. The first step in transcending the patterns of addictions, bondage, self-destruction behavior. It's to bring awareness to the situation, getting ready to acknowledge certain things to start to create more freedom for yourself. It speaks about an attachment to the cardinal instant gratification at the expense of long-term balance and happiness. This card reminds us that there is a choice None of us are truly a slave to our passions, or if we are, we have relinquished control and allow ourselves to become so into it that it becomes carrying the message that the time has come to, sever to sever these ties. Key words are addiction, self-destruction, shadow self, attachment, restrictions, materialism, raw desires, depression, and bondage. When this card appears, there is something that you do that has a tendency of making you feel good, but it's not good for your health or well-being. In this situation, it comes on the person, how she or he attacks the situation. You may be ignoring your higher self or be disconnected from your spiritual self in some way. Well, my lovelies, I hope you guys were able better to understand the devil card in the major arcana a little more personal and as always what does the major arcana the devil remind you of and your everyday life or a movie a character since everybody has been making this big deal about the famous serial killer in the 80s that was caught in the late 90s jeffrey dahmer this could be a good representation of that devil card Represents a coming to your shadow side, allowing your cardinal desires to take over yourself completely, losing yourself or even losing attachment to reality and giving in completely to all that is wicked. Well, until next time, I hope you guys have a better understanding. I hope you guys are enjoying these lessons. And if you are, definitely comment below as it keeps us more motivated to continue bringing these videos to you. As always, my lovelies, I'll see you guys in the next time. Until then, bye-bye.